All right, so it's been a minute since I've talked about thumbnails. I'm now approaching six months on YouTube, and I thought I'd do a quick update on how I'm doing my thumbnails for my channel. Now, full caveat, I am not a thumbnail expert. The purpose of this video is really just to help other newer folks out there who maybe just need a little bit of inspiration or who want to see how other newer creators are making their thumbnails in Canva. So I'm going to give you a quick tutorial, very informal on how I'm doing my thumbnails lately. And I have a little bit of data that might suggest they're maybe a little bit better than where I used to be. So when I had ChatGPT analyze my first 10 thumbnails for click-through rate, it said that my click-through rate was about 3.3%. Looking at my last 10 thumbnails, I was closer to 4.3%. So I'm a percentage point improved, which is great. So let's pop into Canva and I'll just give you a quick rundown of how I'm making my thumbnails lately. Now, of course, I'm in the YouTube growth space. I'm an educational channel. I do mostly talking head. I'm 45 years old and my audience, I would imagine is closer to my age or a little bit older. So I'm not trying to design overly flashy or gimmicky or clickbaity thumbnails that the 25 year olds might be clicking on. I really want to exude trustworthiness and curiosity within my thumbnail. So that's really what I'm going after in this tutorial. So here's my full library. We'll change the layout. And what I normally do is once I have a new thumbnail that I need to create, the first thing I will have done in advance is while I'm filming my video, I will also pose. I'll smile. I'll try to capture on my face the emotion that I want to convey in the thumbnail. Now, I'm not always perfect with that. Sometimes I smile too much or I'm not giving off the right emotion. So I would ask you, think about your title and think about the caption that you want in your thumbnail before posing for it. That way you can resemble the emotion that you're trying to convey. Now, if you've seen any of my organizational videos in the past, you know that I keep all of my thumbnail assets in a single folder in the overall project folder. So all of these right here are screenshots that I took from the movie of me posing. So here's the awkward video of me trying to pose for the thumbnail. I do a variety of poses just to cover all the bases. And then eventually what I will do is I'll play the video and at certain points where I think there's a good pose, I'll take a screenshot. All of those screenshots then find themselves back into this folder here. And as you can see from this one folder, I've got quite a few screenshots that I can pull from. What I'll do then is I'll come into Canva. I will drag all of those screenshots into Canva and then I'll start to whittle them down to maybe my top three. So here's what that looks like. The first thing I'll do is I'll come to my most recent thumbnail, which is this one right here. I'll come up and make a duplicate of it. And this will be my brand new thumbnail template. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put the title for the video and then I'll delete out all of the existing images because we're going to obviously pull in new ones. And what I'm left with is really just the text and the background. I'll simply click and drag all of these into my Canva project. Canva will then import those pictures. So spend a few minutes weeding out the ones that you don't like and just land on maybe two or three that you think you'd want to explore. All right, so let's pick this one here. I'm just going to crop it to get the black bars off the picture. And then I'm going to make it as big as possible for fitting in the screen here. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do as I have this picture selected, I'm going to hit Command C or Control C on my keyboard and then Command V or Control V on my keyboard to paste it. So I'm going to copy the image, paste the image. And then what I'll do next is I'll hit the background remover. And this way I have just myself in the foreground and then I have the full image in the background. The reason I like doing it this way is so that I can manipulate the colors in the background differently than just myself. So once I have both of those and I positioned it correctly to sit on top of the background image, I'll come up here and I will go into the background image. I'll make sure it's the bottom layer. And then I like to edit this and add a vignette to it. I normally go to about 70%. And what this does, if you don't know what a vignette does, it really just kind of adds some darkness to the edges of the image. And that's going to create some contrast between the foreground and the background. Once I have the vignette, I'll come in here and add a filter. Lately, I've been using Fresco, and that's going to, again, change the color profile of that background. And then finally, I'll add a blur so that the background has a little bit of a blur element to it. I usually just keep it around 10 for intensity. So now that the background's been treated, I'll now treat the foreground, which is my picture here. 
So I'll come in to edit and I'll start tinkering with some of the color settings. Now I know from this previous thumbnail that the color settings I have applied to myself here are actually pretty decent. So I'm just gonna copy them from the old thumbnail to the new one. So unfortunately there's no clean way to copy them. I have to kind of manually do them one by one. So for temperature, I'll do three and for tint, I'll do negative eight. Then for brightness, negative seven, contrast 15. Okay, and once you have the colors dialed in, and again, this is something you're gonna have to tinker with depending on how your picture shows up in Canva, these color settings are gonna be different every single time. But the next thing to do would be to modify the text in the image. So you really need to think about the caption in your thumbnail as a way to complement interest in the video. And the way to do that is to provoke a little bit of curiosity, FOMO, intrigue, or some other emotion that's gonna get people to wanna watch. Now your title should also be doing that, so your thumbnail should complement the title. And I would recommend that it doesn't necessarily repeat the words that are in the title itself. So because my title is how to use YouTube premieres to boost engagement, beginner's guide, the text could be something like, are you using this, right? It's a question provoking a little bit of intrigue with the viewer. They may not inherently know exactly what I'm referring to, but I'm asking them a question that they might wanna answer and then they'll see the title and it'll be referencing premieres. Alternatively, I could put something bold in there like you need to try this or you need to use this, right? Almost like a dictate or a mandate for the viewer. And that might create a little bit of FOMO if they're not already doing it. And then once I have my text correct, I'll come in here and I'll take this background element and I'll simply just resize it to fit a little bit more snug underneath the text. So really I've got my top layer, which is the color treated, just standalone image of myself. I have my text. I have this colored graphic that adds a little bit of dimension to the picture. And then I've got my background that I've treated for color, for vignette and for blur. Now, the last thing I forgot to mention for the top layer, if it is just you, you can actually come in here and do the face retouch to kind of smoothen out any of your facial features that you kind of want to mask. I normally just leave it at around 30 because if you do too much, it looks very artificial and fake. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, this is like a three minute thumbnail. It's super quick and easy as long as you are really just kind of replicating the style from previous thumbnails. And again, going back to this broader conversation, I think one thing that viewers like, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong about this, but I think viewers like consistency and brand recognition. And there's a couple creators out there that I'll mention that do a really good job of keeping the same styles, colors, and fonts with every single thumbnail as a creative promoting brand awareness. So the first example is created by Wayne. This is a brilliant channel who does a phenomenal job with branding and color and design. He's a master in Canva and a majority of his videos are talking about Canva. But as you can see with his thumbnails, they're all very similar in style. They have this same kind of brown, gray, white color scheme. They're using the same fonts, similar sizes. And in some cases, it'll be him in the thumbnail, but in most cases, it's him showing a picture of an actual object like the computer, the screenshot, the phone, the product that's being demoed in the actual video itself. The second example is Steven Thompson. I've talked about him in the past and he does a great job with his color profile as well and similar styles and formats within his thumbnails. He also includes himself with an expressive emotion in each thumbnail as well. And honestly, I feel like he does a phenomenal job of just reinforcing with each thumbnail his brand message to his viewer. And by the way, if you like this style of content and you like the vibe here, please consider subscribing to the channel for more YouTube growth updates and educational videos just like this one. And also, if you're ready for a one-on-one -on -one consulting session, I do have a link in the description below. Feel free to click that to book today.